join us. So welcome everyone for an NNLM Region 1 update and town hall. Um, if you have questions that you'd like to ask during this session, uh, please feel free to use the chat button. You are also more than welcome to go ahead and um, use the chat feature or unmute yourself and uh, connect with us. Um, there will be some time for interaction and some questions are thrown in throughout this presentation. Um, it may be a short presentation, but hopefully a lot of the information we've shared will be of interest and of use to you. Um, also, I'd like to share in the chat box now currently is um, a handout of the slides that will be shared, uh, as well as a handout of all of the links that are referenced in case you are interested in accessing that. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, I hope to share a bunch of different accomplishments um, that we've had over the past year, um, as well as some of the plans that we hope to accomplish before the end of April of 2023. So let's see here. Um, region 1 is compri comprised of eight different states, half of which were new to the University of Maryland, Baltimore, and we also still have the District of Columbia. Um, the team currently consists of MJ Tui as our, uh, actually, it's uh, Vice President. Provost uh, in uh, Associate Vice Provost and Dean of Libraries, um, Director of the NNLM Region 1 and NUSO. Uh, there's me, the Executive Director. We also have Colette Boyu, who is our Office Manager, uh, Tiffany Chavis, our Health Literacy Librarian, Christine Neiman does data manage is our data management librarian. Uh, Nancy Patterson and April Wright serve as our outreach librarians, and Faith Steele is our outreach and education librarian. Um, within the NNLM over the past uh, year and a half or so, um, there's been a lot of uh, work between each of the regional medical libraries, offices, and centers. And um, one of the particular things that we were discussing were what would we focus on for the next throughout the remainder of this cooperative agreement. And so the uh, topics that we're covering um, for the next few years include confronting health misinformation, the bridging the digital divide, as well as environmental determinants of health. And what I would encourage you to do is to check the link that we provided that gives a brief overview of what each of the three different topics uh, we intend to cover will include. In addition to that, there is a number of regional interest areas and focus areas that this uh, regional medical library is particularly interested in. The first, which is our member insights and engagement. So we, um, both Faith and I, are probably going to do a lot more of this in terms of connecting with our network members um, and getting a feel for what's going on within their institution or organization and see how the NNLM can support their initiatives as well. Um, we also are involved in a number of different large-scale uh, partnerships, one of which uh, we have is with the American Public Health Association next month as a big meeting, um, but we hope to have more national partnerships to help us with a lot of our outreach and engagement. Um, we do a lot with our training and education programs, um, some of which you may have seen um, all of our staff involved in with teaching. Um, we do support both the national training programs um, that the NNLM offers, but also some of the regional webinars we offer as well. Um, there are some topical areas that we are very much interested in, including health literacy, research data management, social justice and health equity topics, and environmental health. So our first discussion question, and you are again free to unmute if you would like. If you can't, please let me know in chat. Um, but I would like to know if you were asked to conduct outreach and education on any of the national initiatives or within our focus areas, what would you think of offering? Um, so I'll give a minute or two so that you can think about this. If you would like to unmute and suggest a program idea or a topic idea related to any of those particular themes, 
Um, I'd love to hear that. We are very much vested and interested in what um, people are thinking about when they hear any of these particular topic areas. Um, so let's see. One mentions uh, that they're highly under-resourced, so it may not be feasible to do much related to uh, confronting health misinformation. So we can talk and share about some of the programs that we're offering that maybe you can share with your constituents as well. Um, Janine, I see that you said you were interested in health literacy as a topic. Um, is there a particular program related to health literacy that kind of interests you? Hi, Tony. Good afternoon. Um, nothing in particular. It's just one of those tried and true issues that is, that is near and dear to my heart, um, both personally and professionally. So it's one of those eighth day of the week projects that I always wanted to uh, work on. So um, I'd be you know, interested in seeing what, um, what, 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 can be, what can I do and what as a group we can do going forward for 2023. Great. Um, Deanne mentions aligning with uh, your institution, social justice and health equity. That's a good topic area. Um, and I know someone that we can probably uh, connect with to talk about that, perhaps in a webinar in the future, too, if you're interested in that. And Aman, you said this morning you met with a couple of colleagues at Penn and discussing how best to create an online health literacy training website focused on confronting health misinformation. Uh, in Philadelphia, in collaboration with the Philadelphia Community Engagement Alliance Against COVID-19. That sounds really cool. So I would love to learn more about that if you're interested, Aman. And, um, see what you your team ends up producing down the line too. I think that's a really great um, initiative that you're doing and collaborating with a number of others as well. Uh, Emily mentions uh, plans on doing uh, by creating a consumer health focused uh, library guide at uh, your institution, uh, specifically for Eastern Shore of Maryland, um, and you're in your very, uh, very early stages of that. Um, that's excellent. And uh, there are a number of resource guides that already exist um, related to consumer health that we'd be more than happy to share with you so that you can help make this process a little bit easier um, in creating a resource guide for your uh, library as well. So just follow up with me later, Emily, and I'll be sure to um, try and share that information with you. Well, let's go ahead and move on. Oh, wait, uh, and Aman says you're happy to share with the Penn Libraries team creates in the next couple of years. So um, that would be wonderful. And um, if it's going to be done in February, there's a lot of opportunity to also promote that out to our users, if that would be something you would be interested in as well. All right. So, um, and please feel free to continue utilizing the chat function if you'd like to share things. Um, and I'd like to move on, but if there are more things that you'd like to share related to addressing some of those topical areas mentioned earlier, please let me know. Um, 
All right, so related to the funding program, I always would like to share some of the current projects that we have funded um, in our current year. Um, and this year, uh, with our major project awards, uh, we funded uh, four community-based organizations. Uh, one was Black Girls with Green Thumbs. And one thing that they're doing is, uh, in addition to a podcast related to nutrition education um, and home garden, they're also doing a plant-based cooking instruction as well. Uh, as part of their project as well, one thing that they were working on is uh, connecting with a local high school to get kids interested in gardening as well, um, but also after they've gardened to sell what is produced at farmer's market to help introduce to them commerce as well. So that's a really interesting project um, and it seemed to uh, appeal to a lot of the peer reviewers as well. Uh, the Bradbury Sullivan LGBT Community Center um, was working on updating some trainings uh, that implemented the CDC's updated guidance on uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, South Central Educational Development is providing health education to uh, rural, underserved, and marginalized communities within Southern West Virginia with a number of different health fairs that they have planned throughout the year. And then Southwest Pennsylvania Environmental Health Project is creating some education uh, programming to help with some deadly chemicals that have been impacting uh, the communities due to fracking. Um, in, with the two public libraries that we funded this year, uh, Lewis Public Library is launching a Be a Health Hero to help adults and teens improve their health literacy skills. Um, in collaboration with the State Library of Delaware um, and every, every library institute, one of the things that they're working on is creating and establishing kiosks um, in rural public libraries to help with telehealth services so that um, their users don't have to travel long distances for healthcare. And then there were two uh, academic institutions that were selected. Uh, one was from the Northern Kentucky University. And one of the things that they're investigating is post-traumatic stress of COVID-19 to college students. And then uh, with the West Virginia University Research Corps, um, they are doing a large scale project utilizing um, artificial intelligence to investigate chronic kidney disease within the state of West Virginia. So I'm looking forward to a lot of the results from their projects. And I think that these are some exciting activities that are planned, um, hopefully for completion within the next uh, several months. Um, a lot of people had questions related to um, some delays that we've had, and we did have to make some adjustments to our year three awards timeline. Uh, this does include, um, instead of a call for applications occurring in January, the call actually occurred in September. And um, at this point, uh, we are currently in the peer review period for our uh, applications that we've received. Um, from there, we have to um, notify the applicants of the uh, peer review decisions. And then um, we will begin a lot of the administrative paperwork. Um, there is a lot of time that's needed for uh, the funded, uh, the selected applications to go through um, our Human Subjects Rights Protections Office and get IRB review completed. So this is probably a much longer process than was anticipated, but we hope that if we adjust the timelines, we'll be able to support the applicants um, and give them enough time to do their projects um, and start May 1. So this is just a general timeline overview, um, but we wanted to be transparent so people are aware of what our awards process is like. Speaking of awards, um, there are a couple of toolkits that we've provided and actually updated to help you with writing uh, any applications for funding. And I know that you might feel that NNLM might be a venue, but you might also apply for uh, something with IMLS, for instance, or NIH, or um, 
NSF for, as another option too. The proposal writing toolkit is a really good resource to help you, and it's been recently updated as of September of this year. And this should provide you some guidance and help give you some thoughtful ways to approach writing a proposal um, in more detail than ever before. For projects that we funded, we've also provided um, an updated resource guide on how to um, manage your project once it was selected for funding. Um, we've also provided a four-part webinar series, and it includes our handouts, slides, as well as the recording if you're interested. Um, and it breaks down the whole um, request for applications all the way up to um, submitting your application. So you'll see more about the building your project from the evaluation backwards to um, just thinking about, is this project going to really fit what the request for applications is suggesting? So let's move on into our engagement program. And we have a philosophy and practice that we're working with. And this adapts both our regional medical libraries um, practice with some of the other toolkits that may exist already. And we're incorporating all of this work into um, engaging with our network members, as well as how we're working with our um, sub awardees, as well as our ambassadors. So some of this takes a little bit of time to get used to, as well as implement as well. But we hope to have a great resource available for people so that you can come to us and see what we have available for you. Um, our governance program has been slow to start, and I deeply apologize for that, but we do have our meetings scheduled for our ambassadors, library advisory board, and communities of interest leaders uh, for January. Um, in the meantime, we've been busy with uh, creating our program more thoroughly and fleshing out a lot of the details uh, to this whole program. Um, that includes identifying uh, trainings that our ambassadors can utilize to teach out into the community. You are also all more than welcome to teach our um, training, utilize our training materials to teach to your community members as well. And some of these would be really helpful in terms of um, identifying what would be really uh, useful for your communities. However, if there's a training that isn't available that you need for your community, please let me know and I can do some investigations to see if there's something that we used to offer or plan to offer and share that with you as well. Um, but uh, we should have a number of different activities involved and you'll be hearing more from our um, governing uh, participants uh, in the near future. Region One has a robust communications program to communicate with all of our members. So we do have our website on nnlm.gov. We also have a direct email that you can utilize. Um, we also have both Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And we're definitely looking for more participants on our LinkedIn, right, Faith? perhaps. Um, we also have a blog, but on a regular basis, we do send a, a digest uh, near the end of the week detailing and uh, sharing information from both the NNLM as well as within the region. So if there's something happening at your institution, um, if it's open to the public, we'd be more than happy to share that. Um, also, if you are, uh, if you have a job available and you'd like us to share that on our digest, we'd be more than happy to do that for you as well. And it would go out to all of our um, users who subscribe. So if you haven't subscribed, please click that link and um, you can sign up quickly to be a part of that list as well. Um, some of our social media engagement, what happened there? Some of our social media engagement, um, uh, we do try and utilize some hashtags and Faith was more than happy to think of things related to our initiatives. And 
she wanted to showcase and highlight things related to environmental determinants of health utilizing this hashtag, um, health misinformation with a health misinfo tag, and then bridging the digital divide um, with an FYI Friday hashtag as well. Um, and there should be more, and I think this is an outdated slide, Faith, but I am sorry about that. Um, but one thing that I will say is that we would love it if you would also share with Faith some things that might be of interest to you. Um, so that leads to our second discussion question of what would you like to see shared on our NNLM communications channels? What would drive you to log into LinkedIn, for example, or check Twitter. Well, you've probably deleted Twitter. Um, check Facebook or go to our blog or read our digest. So if you can let me know, what things do you want to see shared that we aren't necessarily sharing? Or if there is something shared, um, what would you like to see us continue doing? So I'll give you a minute. You are welcome to uh, unmute if you're interested, or you can share in the chat box if you'd like. I used to teach, so I can stay silent for a lot longer than you realize, too. So Steph mentions to continue to share on Twitter with the Medlibs hashtag. That would be a good opportunity, Faith, to continue communicating with our medical library community. You, uh, Emily, uh, Emmy, I'm sorry, uh, really only seeks events on Facebook. So maybe one thing that we could consider doing, Faith, is to create events of our upcoming activities um, that um, people can see. And uh, whatever the website URL is, they can use that to register for any of the upcoming events. And that's something that we can do as well. I apologize for mispronouncing your name, Emmy. So I'll let people think about this some more. Oh, um, Aman mentions live Twitter chats. Not sure what the equivalent is for Instagram. Um, well, there is Instagram Live, um, as it's very similar to Facebook Live, um, because you know they're owned by the same company now. Um, Twitter chats, uh, I used to do those like a decade ago when we I hosted journal clubs on Twitter. Um, so that is something that we can certainly consider. Uh, Faith, if that's something you'd like to talk about with me in the future, we can see more about doing something like that. That's a good idea, Aman. I've kind of forgotten about those. All right. So one thing that uh, we've discussed previously before, and we'd like to help as a, you know, a call for help, is um, let us feature you. Um, we would love to highlight members throughout Region 1. So if you'd like to be interviewed for a blog post, we'd be happy to do that. Or if you'd like to write the blog post yourself, you can certainly do that. We do have some uh, guiding questions that we can share with you in advance if you'd like, and um, we would love to feature you on our blog. Um, and then again, if you'd like 
like to share some social media content that you discover at your own institution. Um, I know that you probably receive your own institutional news. Um, you can share that with us and we'd be more than happy to share that um, on our social media as well. Um, and then I'm sharing Faith's contact information so that you can send her an email to let her know of your interest in participating in writing for us or with um, doing any social media. Um, now, another thing that we're thinking of adding to our blog are resource reviews. And these are non-peer reviewed publications. If you're interested in doing one yourself as well, um, you are more than welcome to. It's something that you can add to your CV if you'd like and uh, the non-peer reviewed category. Um, but it's something that can benefit network member newsletters, um, blogs, you can use it for other communications as well. Um, and it could be an NLM resource if you'd like, or if there is a resource that was created and developed by your own institution, that is also something because not many people might not be aware of it. And if it's for the public, this might be a great way to communicate and share that out with others. So um, something to definitely consider. Um, you can talk about it and we'll look it over, provide you some minor edits if necessary. But if you give the go ahead, we'll go ahead and publish that on our blog and share it out on our digest, possibly even our social media. We're just that desperate for social media content, I believe, Faith. So next, let's look at our education and training program. So as a reminder, um, our staff provides um, trainings uh, that supports the uh, NNLM training office, which oversees the, our national training programs. Um, we also do multi-regional collaborations. So you'll see that we've often collaborated with um, say region two at Medical University of South Carolina or region seven, for instance, at the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School. I have to remember that. Um, or any of the other regional medical libraries or even another center to um, provide you some of uh, the training that we offer. And then there are those who connect with us and ask if we'd be open to hosting a webinar for them. So if you have a topic that you feel that you would love to share or feel that you're an expert of, we may be open to hosting a webinar for you. And it's a great opportunity to add that to your CV. And if you're up for or tenure and promotion, it's a great thing to include. Um, if you're an MLA member, we'd also be happy to write an AHIP letter for you so that you can receive two AHIP points for doing a webinar with us as well. Um, a lot of the classes we provide are on demand or they're on our Moodle learning management system asynchronously, sometimes synchro synchronously as well. Um, but Webinars are very common. Uh, you'll see things offered via WebEx or in Zoom. So we've had a number of trainings offered in the first two quarters. And so I'm also sharing some upcoming trainings that you'll see over the next couple of months as part of quarter three and as part of quarter four, the last three months of our NNLM program year. So um, I know Tiffany's offering a webinar on social work interns in the library. Uh, we'll have a From Problem to Prevention Evidence-Based Public Health webinar. Um, we'll also have a clinicaltrials.gov for librarians webinar. And then I believe the Introduction to Health Reference Ethics and Best Practices is a Moodle LMS class. Um, in the last part, we'll also have wellness in the workplace. Uh, we'll provide uh, multilingual and multicultural health information resources as a webinar. Um, there is also pediatrics and medical humanities. I believe April is offering that webinar. And then um, stigma, trauma, and people who use drugs will be a webinar later. And hosting a hackathon um, will be part of. Uh, Love Data Week as a series of events that will be planned from the NNLM. And um, as we reach and connect with others, there may be additional webinars and other trainings that will be offered. So please be on the lookout for all of the webinars and trainings that we will be offering in the near future. 
In addition, we have, I believe, uh, 31 resource guides covering a variety of different topics from funding to citizen science, health literacy, emergency and disaster preparedness. There's also one on clinical conversations and a data glossary, for instance. Um, in, on the horizon, I believe we will have an, one related to environmental health. So please be on the lookout for that, and we'll be sure to promote that when it becomes available. And then uh, one thing that is a good reminder is that the NNLM will pay for your application fee. So we'll sponsor your application fee if you are interested in a MLA specialization for consumer health information, disaster information, data services, or the brand new systematic review services specializations. Um, there are three different websites that are related to the first three. The systematic review specialization is still a little new, but if you are interested in having the NNLM cover that specialization for you, um, email me directly and I will connect with MLA to see what we need to do to make sure you don't have to pay for that specialization. So just let me know, and we will go from there. Um, our upcoming uh, national virtual symposium will cover health misinformation. You did probably see a call for applications or proposals to present during this symposia. Um, the dates are currently from April 4th through 7th, and um, you, if you go to the website there, it'll keep you up to date and let you know when uh, registration is officially open for this free uh, symposium. So I've shared with you a number of different um, symposia, training education resources, and um, just our upcoming webinars, for instance, but one question that I normally would like to ask is what kind of training and education would you like the NNLM to provide? Or you haven't seen the NNLM provide this in a while and you would love to see this. Um, uh, also, concurrently with that is, are there any resource guides you would like the NNLM to develop? And you are more than welcome to unmute if you're interested, or you can um, go ahead and utilize the chat feature as well. Um, I will save the chats so that we can refer back to it, Faith and I, and see what kind of things are being suggested as a reminder for us so that we can investigate and see if anyone in our staff might be able to assist with that as well. Um. Lori mentions, I like the idea of finding reliable health information versus the idea of misinformation. Um, Emmy mentions, is there a training about the trainings education available to us? Oh, that's all over the place, Emmy, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Emily mentions uh, browsing, uh, that you've enjoyed browsing, what training is offered currently, um, and Emily agrees with Emmy. So it is fun to try and locate all of that information. One thing that might sometimes be good is to look at the training calendar versus just scrolling through the pages of each of the different things listed there. Um, and you can see what's kind of upcoming and planned as well that way. Um, some things are still in process. Um, so uh, I know that uh, Christine is working on something related to um, accessibility and data, I believe, and that'll be like a, a series of webinars uh, coming in April, for instance. Um, and then there are other things that are coming up that might not show up on the calendar, like the Health Misinformation Symposia, for instance, isn't up on the calendar just yet. Mm -hmm. 
is NNLM developing trainings geared towards the new MLA systematic review services specialization? Not necessarily is the answer I can give you. The one thing I will say is we have offered in the past um, webinars from Margaret Foster, I believe, who did things related to um, understanding systematic reviews better. Um, if you had attended those and saved your MLA certificate from that, if it's within a three-year time period, you should be able to utilize that towards your specialization as well. Um, but it, it is going to be happenstance towards um, a webinar that could be hosted, um, but it's not going to be a full onset class that the NNLM will offer. We kind of have to differentiate what is part of the MLA competencies versus the expectations the National Library of Medicine puts forth to the NNLM as well. So we kind of have to separate those two. And um, the, though we can't offer too many like full-on classes towards that, it is something that if there's a webinar presenter, we might utilize that and you could use that MLA CE towards the specialization. I hope that helps. Any other thoughts or ideas? I will also mention that in the past, we've had things related to, um, uh, as part of some DEI webinars, we've had uh, Ioni Damasco speak prior to a on anti-racism in libraries, as an example. We've um, covered a number of different topic areas that are DEI focused and um, beneficial for a number of different libraries in the past. So if you have ideas for a webinar or you yourself feel that you would like to speak on a particular topic, feel free to reach out to any one of us in the Region 1 office, and we'd be more than happy to um, connect with you and see what we can offer based on the topic it is that you're interested in uh, speaking on. Um, so uh, the one thing that I will also mention is that we encourage you wholeheartedly to become involved with the NNLM. Um, so aside from being an NNLM member, please update your record. Um, Nancy is, would be forever grateful if you would go in and check your membership record and update that. Um, also, feel free to reach out to us and send us an email. Uh, I would also encourage you to subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and I provided the link for that earlier. Um, you can be spotlighted in our newsletter or a blog. You can uh, share information with your colleagues. Um, you can take a class as well as give a class if you're interested. Um, you can volunteer to be a proposal reviewer. Um, you can also participate still in our governance program. So um, there are still opportunities available as a communities of interest leader, if, especially if you were interested in one of those national initiatives that we had mentioned or uh, areas of interest that we're going to focus on. And then um, you can also exhibit. We have started as some ex exhibiting. And if you are interested in exhibiting with us, you are more than welcome to participate as well. So um, that is the whole gamut of the presentation there. I'm going to, again, um, share with uh, everyone here uh, a link to the slides that I've shared, as well as the handout. Um, it is 508 compliant. And I will go ahead and um, open the floor up for you if you have any questions that were not shared or if you have any other thoughts. Um, I am completely open to hearing them and I or someone in the Regional Medical Library, I will call on you to uh, talk and share.
this could very well be my fault for scheduling this on a Monday afternoon, Faith. I just think everybody is like taken. So they're just <laughs> taking it all in, you know, like it's Monday and we're, you know, digesting and so. I, I understand that. It was a lot of information I did share. But I would encourage everyone to, you have a copy of the slides. My contact information is available on there. Um, feel free to reach out to me. If you'd like to talk to me separately, please feel free to mention that and we can schedule a consultation and discuss things further. Um, I know, uh, let's see, Faith, Christine, April, Colette, Nancy, and MJ are here. So please feel free to touch base with us. We are part of the Regional Medical Library, and we're here to help support you in your endeavors as much as we can. Um, not sure if this is appropriate, but a resource guide, class, et cetera, on basic scientific writing for librarians helping researchers. That's a good idea. Tiffany, you were interested in scientific publishing, so maybe that's something that you can explore down the line. Well, I'm not going to keep everyone. And so I will save the chat and I will give everyone um, a blessing of an additional 18 minutes of their life before you have to go into your next meeting. So have a wonderful rest of the day and week, everyone, and be safe over the holiday week next week. And done. Bye, all. See ya.